I brought this topic up tangentially recently in, in a different outing here. There is something to be said for the blend of story and art that truly makes a comic book. And I know that sounds obvious and just by definition what a comic book is, but I think we've all fallen prey in the past to flipping through a book or just looking at the art on the cover and deciding that we didn't like it, we wouldn't like it, it doesn't look good, we're going to move on, it's not our style, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Many times that's going to be correct. You need to know yourself well enough to know there are certain styles that won't appeal to you. Maybe you don't like the more manga-influenced style or the more animation-influenced style. Maybe you don't like classics, classic you know, DC, Marvel, 60s, ink and brushwork kind of style. Everyone is different, and that's fine. Like what you like, enjoy it, shout it from the rooftops. There is a certain percentage of the time, though, that you may have to ignore your first thought. That first look at a comic may not hold as true as you thought it would after you read the book. I've discovered this a lot in reading European comics for the last five or six years. Some styles, at first blush, don't appeal to me. They aren't done for me. But when I sit down and get into the book, read the pages, follow the story, read the the sequential storytelling, the narrative, the way the story is told, it all kind of just fits together. Styles that may have been annoying to me once upon a time or that would not have appealed to me are ones that work in the framework of that album or in that style. There's a lot of sort of autobiographical work that's done in France that has certain styles to it that initially would not have appealed to me, but once I read them, I I grew to love them, and I I still read them on uh, Instagram accounts, and I I read them in albums when they come out. Uh, Penelope Bejo's uh, Josephine is one of those books. That was one of the early on European albums I read. Doesn't seem to be a book that would stand out to me, and that style, you know, is as far as you can get from North American superhero comics, but it works for the stories she's telling, for the jokes, the the gags she's serving. And it turns out that style seems to be the style for a lot of uh, comic artists telling autobiographical stories in France. There's a couple other I follow on Instagram right now, and I can't remember their names, so I can't help. One of them is Margot something. She's had a couple books out. So yes, there is something that you can't put into words that may not pay off at first blush, but when you sit down and read the book, not just flip through the pages, not just look at some of the quote-unquote pretty pictures or perhaps ugly pictures, when you go into the book and read the book, it feels different. It works differently. I I don't mean to be all woo-woo on you here, but that's just the way comics work sometimes. They're the blending of the two parts to create a a bigger whole. Two plus two equals five, all that kind of stuff. There's one other test I I once played with, and this was back in the days when I was still writing for CBR. I know I wrote wrote up this whole idea back then, but there was a time when a lot of the websites would show you the previews of this week's comics, and you'd see the first, whatever it was, four, eight, ten pages of the comic, probably not ten, especially in North America, the first few pages of the comic would be in thumbnail size at the bottom of the article that was previewing it. And you could just tell whether you were going to want to read that book or not based on the color scheme of those preview pages. There were some books that just looked so dour and dark and dingy. I knew I wasn't going to be in the mood for them. It made the books that were brighter colored, more sort of rainbow colored, if you will, look more interesting. The books that had uh, a greater differential between sort of background colors and foreground colors, even at the thumbnail size, you could pick those out. And I think a large part of that is the storytelling part of coloring that we tend to forget mostly because we think of coloring as being something that creates a mood more than something that tells the story. Colorists do a lot more work than we ever give them credit for, I think in large part because many of us don't understand what it is they do. Yes, we get it. They color in between the lines. They add some special effects. They keep track of nights and days. But there's more to it than that. There's beyond just the 
modeling color and creating shadows and light and highlights and speculative lights and all that kind of stuff. Specular lights, specular somethings, specular highlights, all those things. They do more than just that, but there is definitely a storytelling component of that. Dominant colors on certain pages give you a certain feeling as you read them. But there's also just at the end of the day, can you read a page? Can you see the art? Is the art clear? And sometimes a big chunk of that is being able to differentiate the colors between foreground and background, making that art stand out in ways that it might not, especially in black and white. We've all seen black and white art, and you can see this a lot in Instagram and Twitter when artists show their black and white work, where there's so much detail, everything is so packed into a panel that you know, thank goodness there's a colorist coming that will help differentiate the different parts of this panel and tell the story better so that we can see what's going on. doesn't mean the artist did a bad job. The artist knows there's color coming in so they can do that style of work and it will work in the end with the color attached. So yes, what I'm saying is do read the book. Don't just judge the book by its cover. Don't judge the book by its thumbnails, but do pay attention to those thumbnails sometimes. They'll tell you a lot about what's about to happen, but read those first couple of pages. And see if it all makes sense. It all comes together to create a good comic book or a good album or whatever format you're reading it in. Thank you all for listening. I'm Augie Bleak Jr. And I'll talk to you again real soon.